you. All right. May peace and power elevation be to everybody out there. What's going on? This is your girl Tiffany coming through live in effect. And I'm here today because I have a guest on the show to deal with the topic about Malcolm S and Kali Muhammad. So we're going to get into the discussion about their speeches, about, you know, how controversial they were. And um, we're going to talk about, you know, the impasse they have made as far as the community is concerned. And all those great things. Now, lately, we've been hearing about Ice Cube and all this other stuff that's going down with him and whatnot and how he's controversial. We have heard about uh, Louis Farrakhan being controversial. But Malcolm X and Kali Muhammad, they were very vocal. They were very radical. And they were they were not the, they weren't afraid to speak on any issues, you know, especially when it was regards to black people. So today I got. One of a longtime friend, somebody I've been known for a while. I was on his program. As a matter of fact, he had a show called The Arenas. So I was on there. Um, and he wanted to come in and have this discussion with me. So I was like, cool, that's great. So I would like to introduce y'all, uh, Brother Black Son. Hey. How you doing, sir? I'm doing all right. How you doing? Yes. So you yeah. wanted to talk about Dr. Kali Muhammad and Malcolm X. So tell tell me why. Well, I wanted to talk about it because, you know, um, you know, dealing with black history, you can't do black history without running into these guys, you know, especially Malcolm, you know, Malcolm X. And then a lot of people may not know about Khaled Muhammad, but he had a very similar uh, parallel history. So as you know, Malcolm X, which was part of the Nation of Islam, who was under, um, who you did a program on, you know, Elijah Muhammad, um, he was silenced because in 19, was it 1968 that- um, well, Malcolm died in 1965. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was 19, Okay, I had to get my date straight. Basically, uh, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Right. And uh, Malcolm, you know, the press, you know, the media, you know, they interviewed Malcolm and said, you know, well, how, well you know, what is your take on the assassination of um, Kennedy, you know, John F. Kennedy? And then he said something to the likes of the chicken coming homes to roost. You know, I'm a paraphrasing it. And basically, it upset um, it upset uh, Elijah Muhammad, and he had Malcolm X silence. Well, you know, you can't. This is my opinion. You really can't uh, censor or silence black people. So um, he began to speak. He was excommunicated out of the Nation of Islam, and he began to speak. Um, and started his own organization. Well, Khalid Mohammed had a similar situation happen to him also. You know, he was the um, part of the Nation of Islam under Elijah Muhammad, and um, he also spoke of. Actually, you know, Khalid Mohammed would do debates. You know, he would go to um, different universities and colleges and have debates on. Um, the subject matter of, I want to say, theological debates or debates on religion or whatnot. And he, um, you know, he would debate like Christianity and then he would debate Christian scholars. He would debate, um, I would guess, Jewish scholars. And they would allow them to speak. Well, of course, you know, Khalid Muhammad, he was kind of notorious for like not losing any debates. And so 
Um, I sent you the link to the actual debate. I, you know, I'm new to this whole streaming thing. I, and I okay, yeah, I have the link, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and share the link. Okay, okay, thank you, Ted. Yeah, I, I got the link. Okay. All right. All right, is it this video right here? Yes, ma'am, and it's that video right there. Yes. Okay, then I'm about to go ahead and play the video. But I got to put you, I got, both of us got to be on mute, so that way we can hear the video. Okay, it's a pretty long video, so. Okay, I just, so how long do you want me to play it to? Um, well, you don't have to play it right now, because the, the, the actual, because we have to go through it, but basically I'm summing up the video. He basically said that black people are the original Jews. Mm -hmm. Okay, that all races come from us, and that basically uh, the Jewish people weren't happy about that. And so they um, basically it got in the media, it got spun around that you know he was being anti Semitic, and so the information got back to Farrakhan, and Farrakhan didn't deny it, he just said he didn't agree with Khaled's tone. That was the phrase that. Uh, Farrakhan said that he didn't agree with the tone, not the actual uh, message that was said, mm -hmm. but just the tone. The tone, he didn't agree with the tone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can explain to the audience the tone. I, I'm I'm still kind of confused about what a tone is. I, I'm I'm kind of oh, okay. I guess what he was trying to say, he didn't agree with how Kali Muhammad went about addressing it because you know Kali was very vocal and he was very rap, but he was very um, eloquent. You know what I'm saying? So he was like straight to the point, straight shooter, no filter. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So I guess what uh, Farrakhan was saying that he could have conveyed his message a little bit better without being so offensive or something. That's why I'm assuming. Okay, so so we have to get in the topic of how. Okay, so because Nick Cannon recently said the same thing, he said that we are the real Jews. And the the uh, the anti um, anti death um, Semitic basically the Jewish people came out and said that what he said was very anti Semitic and so right how would you, I guess my question to you would be how would you go about saying we are the original Jews without being offensive I maybe you can well I mean I don't agree with that you know, there. I mean, it, it's like basically there's no other way of saying it. The best thing is, especially if you're working for a company that is owned by the Jewish people, such right. as Icon, right? If it's owned right. by the Jewish people, it will be. I guess it will be best not to say it because you know, either way, even if you try to say it in the appropriate way, they'll take it and they'll run away with it. They'll try to use it against you. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so then it would be offensive to from the get get go to even have a debate with them, and they 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 were invited to have this debate. So it's like, well, why would you invite? I guess this is my question to me, you know, Tiffany. Why would you invite somebody to debate who the original Jews are if like you're going to end up be, being offended? I I don't know. I mean, this that's just my opinion, but you know, yeah. Somebody had put on here that Kali Muhammad called out Ice Cube for assistance. I mean, to yeah, Ice. He said Kali Muhammad called out Ice Cube too for assistance. Ice Cube for assistance. You mean when when he started the called out Ice Cube for assistance? Okay, well, you know, Kali no Muhammad was very well known in the hip hop community, uh, such as Public Enemy, Ice Cube. Um, Tribe Called Quest, mm -hmm. that time period where you had conscious rap, they would sample, um, they would sample a lot of his material. So Khalid Mohammed reached out to the people in the hip hop community for help. I mean, that's what the new Black Panther Party was, you know? So, you know, you gotta understand when he left the nation, he was receiving uh, death threats. Oh yeah. And yeah. he was, he basically, he, you know, he was shot at. He was shot. Yeah. 
he was injured. So he wasn't playing with his uh, uh, security and his safety. So, yeah, he called out the people who had his back. And so, yeah, he, he wasn't taking any chances. So, yeah, he called out the Ice Cube. I'm sure he called out the Chuck D from Public Enemy. I'm sure he called out to numerous hip hop um, groups that supported him. So, yeah, you know, um, it, it wasn't unusual, especially, you know, this is right after he left the nation or excommunicated from the nation of Islam and started speaking and joined the new Black Panther Party. And yeah, it, it was, it, it, his security was at risk. So, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yep. So, um, you want to go ahead and get to the video? Um, so I didn't have time to, <laughs> uh, so the, okay. Uh, you have to fast forward it. Do you have a video? You have a video? Yeah. Right? Okay. So you have to fast forward it to where Khalid starts talking. Okay. Then. All right. Because the, right. he has two rabbis there and they both, uh, basically they're having a debate. So yeah. Um, okay. I don't have the timestamp on it. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Okay. I got it. I got it. I fast forwarded. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and um, put you on mute. Okay. Jerry Goldstein, Professor Zeb Gopper. This is a very important topic that has been chosen for us. We have talked about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that we should begin everything in the name of God. So in the name of Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. And we forever thank Allah for raising in our midst the black man and black woman of America. A divine leader, a divine teacher, and surely a divine guy in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank Allah and his messenger for preparing a champion for the black man and black woman's cause. The most dynamic and charismatic and certainly, the guide of our day made that way by God and his messenger, Minister Louis Farrakhan. In their names, I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. And to others, shalom alaikum. The topic is the chosen people. What a topic. Before we can go in to the chosen people, we have to ask, who's doing the choosing? <laughs> because as Professor Garber has said, he spoke from his own individual point of view. There would be others if we 
had everyone to speak who would speak from their own individual point of view. Everybody would, as the old folks say, among black people, everybody would pick and choose. Now, what we want to know is, who's doing the choosing? What are they choosing for? And we've got to look at the old scripture that says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Now, what the gift? Who's the gift? The beginning of what? So it is possible for us to begin at the beginning. Judaism would not exist if Africa did not exist. Islam would not exist if Africa did not exist. Christianity would not exist if Africa did not exist. And the white man and white woman himself and herself, and I certainly mean no disrespect, but you were warned that you must honor your mother and your father. Your days may be long up on the land. And let's get that mess straight before we even get started. Every Caucasian, every white man and woman who is not a Jew is a Gentile. I'm going to take a look at it. When we study with all etymology, the origin, the beginning, are the root of terms and terminology. Isn't it interesting? The base or the root, the prefix of the term. Gentile is the same as the prefix, the base, base or the root of the term Gentile. All white folks who do not describe and believe to the tenets of Judaism are considered white folks in general. <laughs> They're considered Gentile. I mean, there's no question about it. Now, let us proceed. Since we've got that out of the way and got that straight. We don't have to especially, except for specific purposes during these few moments, separate the Jew from other white folks. All white folks are white folks. Right. But for specific purposes and to adhere to the debate topic, we will have to make a distinction because the Jews have indeed caught hell all over the world. That people that are called Jews today let me put that on the phone. If, if it's not insulting to anyone, and even if it is, it is. <laughs> I have to say, so call you. And then I'm going to go after this. So call you. You see, the Jew is indeed an ancient people. Right. The Jew is indeed. And original people. Right. But the question is, are you the real Jew? Yes. The question is, those of you of white pigmentation and white pigmentation, are you that original Jew from Abraham and from Moses? That's the question. That's the question that we hope to answer today. Because when you hide behind the term Jew, you are hiding behind and something that the cover has to be pulled off of today. Now, the Jew has caught hell. The so-called Jew, the white Jew, has caught hell all over the planet Earth. No one can deny that. But now the question is, why has the white Jew caught hell? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, under the searchlight of truth, shows us why the white Jew has caught hell. He teaches us that the white Jew has caught hell because you represent that group or that circle of people who adhered to the laws and the teachings and the customs that Moses brought to you. That Moses actually gave you a sense of civilization. Moses 
actually gave to you a sense of culture. And Moses actually gave to you an edge of the rest of the Gentiles. Your adherence to what Moses taught you put you out front. And when you're out front and the spotlight is on you, you meet with the anger, the resentment, the jealousy, and the scorn of your other white sisters and brothers. Right. Who is this chosen people? What beginning can we ascribe to them? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the white man and white woman are biologically and genetically a grafted mutant people who come up out of the original black man and oh. It is biologically and genetically impossible for the recessive white man and recessive white woman, Muhammad, it teaches us to produce the dominant yellow baby. It is biologically and genetically impossible for the recessive yellow man and yellow woman to produce the dominant brown baby. It is biologically Logically and genetically impossible for the recessive brown man and woman to produce the dominant black baby. But that black man and the black woman, they can be blue black, purple black. Black is 150 million midnight. And no matter how black they are, if the seed runs wild, or what they call scientifically, since everybody hasn't been scientific. I think I should be in that. The root of the term science comes from the term seal, which means to know. We can't just get up here and run off at the mouth and give it's a personal opinion. We're dealing with the lives of the people of the planet Earth. I can't just get up here and talk. This is just me. So what? It's just you. We want science. And science comes from the root, which means to know. We've got to have facts. And before this is over, you will see that this is not the ranting of a, uh, an angry, hateful, resentful, wild-eyed, bald-headed militant, <laughs> but you will meet with unmistakable, irrefutable, undeniable, and indisputable fact proof and evidence, and then we'll have an opportunity to question it before you go. Now, okay, so now, now watching the video and seeing that, um, you know, he talked about who the real Jews were. Now, what was the one to make as far as the commentary on it or? Right. Well, he was saying in the context that in order, uh, the real the, the whole debate was about who are the real Jews. Basically, to sum it up, Khaled was saying that based on science and based on his studies, that black people are the original Jews. To sum it up, and the uh, rabbis who he was debating with got upset. Over and so that's that started a whole whirlwind of, of of controversy, basically based off that one statement, based off this one debate, is which caused him to get excommunicated by uh, Farrakhan, and which caused him to basically have this stigma of being uh, um, anti-Semitic. So that yeah, that what you just watched started all that. Okay. That 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 was at um. Uh, that was in 1993 at King College. Mm. Oh, at King College? King, yes, K E K E I. I'm sorry, K E E N, King College. Okay, see, now the one that I have saw before that took place at King College, he was giving a lecture and a couple of white people walked out. Yeah, that's. I think that that might be a different. Uh, that might be the same one because yeah, people walked out of that one too. They showed a camera where people not only walked out, but a guy interrupted him and said, "Hey, you know what? What are we talking about here?" And he said, "Look, we're talking about who the original Jews are. This is a topic, right?" 
And even the rabbis who he debated against agreed with that. So, yeah, it caused a lot of controversy because people didn't want to, they didn't like when he was saying, okay, we're the original people, you know, that come from Abraham and Moses. Okay. So now looking at Kali Muhammad and Malcolm X, uh, what do they both have in common and what do they have that's uh, different? Let's talk about that criminality. Okay, number one, they both were kicked out of the nation for speaking on the doctrine that they were taught. You know, they taught that uh, Elijah Muhammad taught that the white man was the devil. Did he not? Okay. All right. So, number two, well, so look at Malcolm X's speech. Malcolm X, he talked about the chickens coming home to roost. At the time, we were at war in Vietnam. And, you know, if you look at it from a biblical or Islamic sense, it's like they have a saying, you reap what you sow. So if you go attack people, eventually it's going to come back to you. Chickens coming home to roost. Okay, so we're looking at Malcolm. Khalid Mohammed. He, you know, when you talk about uh, who are the original Jews, it goes back to the teachings. Again, we are supposed to be the original people. You know, if you look at the Bible and you look at the Quran, it gives you specific uh, descriptions of what these people look like. So, uh, in a sense, Khalid Muhammad was showing that all the religions were co-opted by white people. And so they were both, you know, it goes back to Tiffany, you know, to that tone. They both had that tone, you know, that got them kicked out. Now, what they said, was it false? No. They were, they were, they were, they were, they were both kicked out for spreading a doctrine that basically they were taught. So they were both kicked out of tone, so they both have that in common. They both, um, when Malcolm X was, uh, you know, the, the new Black Panther Party was formed, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the original Black Panther Party was formed because of Malcolm X. You know, they were inspired by Malcolm X. As Khalid Mohammed, the new Black Panther Party was inspired, they made him a chairman. So they had that in common. Um, they both were basically spoke out and they both were uh, basically uh, were at risk as far as their security uh, being dealt. You know, Malcolm X um, had uh, not only people calling threat his phone, but he had his um, house fire mount. Now, people say, oh, it was probably the government. We don't know. You know, Malcolm X, you know, he, he talked about, you know, how people um, was threatening his family, making phone calls, you know. And, and he said himself, and I quote, you know, that Elijah Muhammad is sending these people after him. Khalid Muhammad said the same thing, that, you know, maybe the people, I don't want to repeat what, you know, this is, and I quote with Malcolm, uh, there's, there's actually a video also too, I'm going to have to see a link to that, where he said, look, I don't want to repeat the same history that Malcolm repeat, but it looked like we're going through the same thing. I'm getting death threats from the nation of Islam. So, oh, and also I wanted to uh, say something real quick. Uh, Abdul Malik in the comments said that uh, Dr. Khalid Mohammed called out Ice Cube to being scared of whites and Jews, dissing himself, yet professing to be a gangster. That's very interesting. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, you got a lot of stars and a lot of celebrities who will not speak against the Jews because the Jews own Hollywood. You know, you know, I I, I talked to a friend of mine the other day, and you know, we were talking about gangsters, right? You know, Italian mobsters and all that, and he didn't know that there were Jewish gangsters, and I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. oh Ben, yeah, you know. oh, go ahead, I'm sorry, Benny Single. Right, Benny Singo, um, you got um, Bugsy Malone. Yeah, and I think there's somebody by the last name of Goldberg. I could be wrong. But, um, right, there's a bunch of them, right. Yeah. But see, 
the, you know, we always focus on the Italian mobsters and mafia. We don't never yeah, talk it's about so you. Like, yeah, you had the German, you had the Russian, you had the Irish, the Jew. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, this whole stigma of not talking about Jews goes way back to the 1920s. Because the Jews didn't want to be out there like the Italians were. The Italians were loud. They were boisterous. They, oh, yeah, you know, the Italian mafia. They wanted to be in the limelight, whereas the Jews did not want to be in the limelight. Because they wanted to take their money into entertainment. Um, basically, in the entertainment industry, they, they had a lot of other stuff going on, too, like prostitution, bootlegging. I mean, it goes on. Uh, opium. I mean, we, we could be here all day talking about you know, the, the dark underworld, but they legitimize their money with entertainment. But, you know, so, um, you know, it's very interesting that, yeah, you know, you talk about, you know, gangster rap, Ice Cube, you know, we're talking about, you know, the whole thing now with Ice Cube and you got uh, uh, Nick Cannon, um, you know, that whole industry. Yeah, you, if, you're, if you, you, Tiffany, become a famous star, the chances are you're not going to speak against the people who are paying you. You know, they right. that on the street, right? Unless you go to, I guess, Tyler Perry, and then some people might say that Tyler Perry's controlled by the Jews. I don't know, but that's Tyler Perry is a word. No, no, I'm saying if you were to be an actress today, Tiff, the uh -huh. only person that you may be able to go to for un for employment is probably Tyler Perry. But some people might say that Tyler Perry might be controlled by the Jews. I'm just putting it out there. Don't know for sure. I'm just saying. You know, How so? No, no, I'm not saying. I'm just saying hypothetically speaking. Mm -hmm. You know, people people say that. People say that. This is a talk on the street. People say, well, if you go into Hollywood, the Jews own everything. So if Tyra Perry goes into Hollywood, who's to say he didn't get loans or access to studios or money or whatever tied with the Jews? Meaning you have an industry that is already monopolized. And so you come in, chances are dealing with the Jews is unavoidable. Remember, they established the whole filming industry back in the 1920s. They monopolized that whole thing. MGM, Fox, I mean, it goes on and on and on. That the whole studio is everything. So, you know, let's just say hypothetically you as an actress go to uh, Tyler Perry, you work for him, and then you say something bad about the Jews, he may not be able to protect you. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Okay. He, he might okay. fire you. Okay. I'm not saying I'm not saying he will do that. I'm saying if that was to happen to you, don't be surprised. Right. Because people have the conception of, oh, you know, Tyler Perry owns his own studio, so I can go work for him willy nilly and just and I oh I can talk about Jew don't 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 go to Tyler Perry thinking you can talk bad about the Jews. You may not have a job the next day, is what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Right. Right. Right, because it's like you basically play see the whole thing is the world itself. It's based on the politics, right? But before you got the politics, you, it was all philosophy. Everything was based on philosophy, right? Then came along the politics. Then came along the social constructs. Okay, right. so right. especially during a time like this, where we got the presidential uh, election going on and all this other stuff and blah blah blah, it's. Okay, if you've seen the debate, have you seen the debate between Donald Trump and um, Joe Biden? Yes, okay, yes, you saw the debate. Now, you saw how it was a travesty. A joke. Yeah, basically, it was a joke. What, from This is what I look at from my eyes. It was entertaining, though, Tim. I, it was entertaining, but I, I got you, though. I got from you. my eyes, what I see is white supremacy liberal versus white supremacy conservative. Right. It's white, white supremacy versus white supremacy. Okay. Now. Right, you because know, they're arguing, that, you said that because I don't mean to interrupt you. They're arguing the same policies. Because Joe Biden is arguing law enforcement. 
Donald Trump is already law enforcement. But go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm just, oh, I had to throw that in there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, you're good. All okay. Right. And now, as of today, we're looking at Ice Cube. Right. Okay. And it's fun that you brought Ice Cube. I mean, it's fun that you brought, brought up Kali Muhammad because Ice Cube and his association with Kali Muhammad, because not many people know that Ice Cube joined the Nation of Islam and he's Muslim. Right. Yeah, That's Ice Cube right. is Muslim. So, like, he's uh, converted to Orthodox um, But anyway. Like, uh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Go Much ahead. like how, how, how uh, um, uh, the box, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali distanced himself from Malcolm X. Good parallel, good point you just made, but go ahead. Right. So, with that being the case, you know, Ice Cube is receiving a lot of backlashes as of right now within right. our community because he wants to meet up with both politicians, both with Joe Biden and Trump, right. to see right. who got the better agenda when it comes to black people because he, you know, right. had a, a, you know, put a list of outline for the black community, black in America. Can I, can I, can I, can I? Can I interject just for a minute here, Tiff? Go ahead. So I watched Ice Cube, and this is Ice Cube's exact words. He said he reached out to both parties. He does not support either party, but he's willing to hear both of them. <laughs> One party said, you know what? We'll talk to you after the election. And the other party said, well, yeah, what do you have to say? Guess who was the one who said we'll talk to you after the party? Right. So what they going to show you? Huh? So what does they go to show you? Well, well, after you just said that, you said, okay, he went to both parties, correct? One well, party well, said, yeah, we'll yeah. talk to you after the election. The other one said, we can talk to you right, right now. now. Right. Okay, let me just say it. Joe so Biden. Just, show you? Just, just listen to what you just said, what okay. that means. That means that, okay, well, I'm, I'm sorry, Tim's. No, just say no. What does that mean? That means one party has an interest and the other one really don't have that much interest. Right. In that okay, yeah. okay, so we're on the same page. Yeah, right. The other one's like, we'll talk to you after the fact. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. No, we no, we have to talk now so we, I can get your vote. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which was Joe Biden's party. Joe Biden come out of here and told Ice Cube, we will talk to you after the election. Mm -hmm. Whereas Trump's camp. Now, now, people in the chat, I don't support neither one, but I'm just this is what Ice Cube said. Huh? I said I, I'm a num uh, partisan too. Right, right, but 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 this is what Ice Cube said. This is I, Ice Cube said that Trump's camp said he is willing to talk to him now. Right. Biden's camp said, you know, we will talk to you after the election. Right. And this is all Ice Cube said. And now Ice Cube, the people are saying, oh, Ice Cube support Trump. No, Ice Cube didn't say that. He didn't say he supported Trump. He said he just he showed basically what both parties said. So what what is this that you know Ice Cube support Trump? Where does this come from? He well, just because the here is with the black community in particular, we're so used to being brainwashed into just supporting Democrat Party. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And or then you got those who just support the Republican Party, but most of right. more so the Democrat Party. We are we're, we're told to rely on the Democrats, and that the Democrats are supposed to represent us and things like that. So they look at is if any black person that's not representing the Democratic Party, right? Right. Or you know, saying or they are doing something that's opposite of it. They're looked at as the coons, the sellouts. The symbols and all of that. Now you do got some black people that are symbols, but that could be on both sides. It ain't even just well, got one particular party. Can I ask you a question? Because I noticed Al Sharpton, he's always, yeah, the black uh Republicans vote against their interests. So let me ask you a question, Tiffany, because you're a smart woman. What is my interest? What is who? What is my interest? Interest in what? Exactly. No, no. When when people when the Democrats always say black people vote against their interests, basically they're saying if you vote for Trump, you're voting against your interests. So my question is, what is my interest? Exactly. What is my interest? Because last time I remember, I'm from California. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. And I don't, I don't want to curse on your show, but you know, you can't give me that BS about Kamala Harris where she locked up uh, mothers for if you're like, let's just say um, your son is 17, he's smoking weed, and he decided not to go to school. They're going to lock you up, Tiffany. Okay. That was under Kamala Harris's policy. Mm. And they locked you up for weed. Now, it's funny how she talked about when she was going to college, she was smoking weed and listening to Tupac. But when Tupac was alive is when she was locking up people for marijuana. This is facts. This is facts. So, again, what is my interest? Right. What what is my interest? Right. Right. So, yeah, next time you listen to Al Sharpton or listen to anybody talking about how black people are sambo for voting, voting for Trump, again, I'm not for neither, but I'm just finding it funny how you're calling these people sambos, but then Kamala Harris and Joe Biden did not have black people's interests. Exactly. So, and this is the thing, we've just been taught how to just vote for Democrat and not even look at both sides of the party and look at their political agendas and see right. okay which uh politician has the best agenda as far as like you know and that's what I see them doing in the so-called minority community so now right. this go back to what I was saying I always say that I do the video and I said this uh you have to you have to play the hands that you are dealt with once you play the hands that you are dealt with then you learn how to play your cards right you understand right. what I'm saying so if somebody gives you a hand, let's say you play poker, right? Right. If somebody gives you a hand, you would normally get about five cards in poker. Right. Okay. So whatever hand that you're dealing with or you dealt with, right, mm-hmm. in the game of poker, you can't look at your opponent's hand. You can't look at somebody across from you. You got to look at your own hand. Right. So whatever hand that you're giving, you got to figure out how you're going to play that hand. Right. Now, you have a possibility of chance of winning, and you may have a chance of losing. Right, but that's better for you to play with that hand versus not playing the hand at all. Because if you don't play the hand at all, then you automatically giving up your uh, chances. Right, right. And so if 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 basically uh, Ice Cube waits until after the election, then he's giving up his hand. It's like, wait a minute, uh, Joe Biden. This is what Trump offered me. What do you got? Oh, well, well, just vote for me. We'll talk after the election. What? Like, like, like no, 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 no. Just like they, you know, he said in the chat, Ice Cube is a crip. So that means he got some street knowledge. He's from South Central LA. He got some street knowledge. You're going to tell a brother, you know, I don't care if you're from Chicago, New York, Atlanta. You're not, how are you going to come up to a black man from the streets talking about, you know what? We got you after the election. What, what the hell? That's crazy. After the election, is he trying to lose? I, you know, but go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, Tim. It's just it, this whole thing is just, is baffling. But I see it. it really, yeah, yeah. But going back to what I was saying, yeah, you just got to play the hands that you dealt with, and then you got to be smart about. So you got to play your cards right. So right. you know you got to be smart because again, if you play it smart, then you got your you got a great chance of winning right. or doing what you right. want. Absolutely. And so that's the part that people don't understand and it's like you know going back to the late Dr. Barbara Seesmore Dr. Barbara Seesmore says it the best she said black folks still don't get it and it's like we still don't get it you know what I'm saying collective we don't still we still don't understand the politics how it works you don't just vote for one particular party because they're democratic or because their uh their skin tone is etc no you gotta look at you gotta look into the political agendas and see what they're really about. And you gotta do right. some background checks. Because if you ain't Absolutely. doing no background checks and you ain't uh, looking into a political agenda, you can just vote for anyone just based off of blind faith. You right. see? Yeah. Yeah. So you got to really like, you know, you got to play the cards right. And that's what Ice Cube is trying to show people like, hey, you gotta be able to play your cards. You gotta be able to, you know, meet with both candidates. Right. It's just sad that he get the backlash for doing such. You know what I'm saying? People try to go back and dig up his old tweets that he did four years ago, five years ago, whatever, to right, try to right. make justification as the way to antagonize him. 
and not really seeing the bigger picture. Like, okay, I see what he's trying to do. Okay, he's trying to really, he's trying to see what would be the best agenda for black folks while we're here. And by him doing this, by him coming up with the proposal and me with no politician on it, right? He's trying to see, he's trying to do something that would be better. So he's trying to set that example of how to go about doing things versus just sitting down with one politician and just endorsing that one politician. You know what I'm saying? Look at both politicians. That's right. Yeah. So what I want to ask you, okay, getting back to Polly and Malcolm X, right? Okay. Um, how do you think they, they influence us as black people politically and socially? Both Malcolm X and Khalid Muhammad. Well, you said, well, just by our discussion of like, you know, the whole Trump and uh, uh, Ice Cube thing, both Khalid Mohammed and Malcolm X started to take on a black nationalist approach. When you mm -hmm. take on a black nationalist approach, then therefore you take on the political aspirants, meaning, you know, the red, black, and green right there. It's basically, they took on they started applying uh, real life politics. Like, you know, Malcolm X talked about, you know, um, agriculture. He started talking about science. He started talking about economics. He started talking about our living situation. He said, you know what, you know, this whole religion thing, this kind of sky basically ain't working for us. And, you know, what, what, what people, um, some people fail to realize, you know, say if it wasn't for Elijah Muhammad, there'd be no Malcolm X. That's not true because uh, Malcolm X's parents were uh, Garveyites. Yep. So therefore, yep. that's why he was able to excel because Elijah Muhammad kind of took from Marcus Garvey the whole nation building thing and just applied it to the nation of Islam. But, you know, Marcus Garvey applied black nationalism back in the 1920s. So Malcolm X already had that instilled in him. That's why he was able to excel in the nation of Islam the way he did. Um, you know, he started applying black nationalism. And with black nationalism, you need uh, any type of nation you form, Tiffany, you're going to need a defense. And that's where the Black Panther, that's where the whole uh, political defense came along. That's why you wouldn't have no... Black Panther Party without uh, Malcolm X, his influence, because he talked about how to defend ourselves, you know. Um, uh, I mean, there are a lot of black people. Uh, you got William, um, I'm going to have to hit you up on another show because uh, uh, there was another guy who talked about, so there, there was many blacks that talked about self-defense, but Malcolm X kind of brought it to the forefront. forefront. But I mean, you talked about Gabriel Prosser last week. You know, we talked about, you know, you could talk about um, uh, the other brother who died in the Carolinas. Um, but I mean, it goes on. I mean, there's many rebellions, but what I'm saying is that he brought a consciousness and awareness of your political needs. You know, your political, you know, your living situation, your defense, your, uh, I mean, he brought all that to the forefront where I don't think, I mean, the nation of Islam did it to a certain degree, meaning, okay, we're going to start planning. These are all, you know, basically a nation within a nation, but you've got to still, what I guess it's called plebiscite, but you still got to apply uh, politics outside of the religious ap apparatus. And Malcolm X provided that, you know, he, he dealt with the... Um, he dealt with uh, a lot of pan-Africanism, basically. Yeah. You know, he, he, he went to different places. He went to Libya. He went to, well, they banned him out of uh, England. I, I believe he went to France. And, um, you know, he started going around and, and talking to people and making them aware of, like, look, you know, you know, land is very important. You know, land is the basis of power. And... You know, at the time when Malcolm X was doing this, you had um, Africa divided up. You know, you had one nation that spoke French. 
You had one nation that spoke English, one nation spoke, I don't know, numerous European languages dividing this African continent. So these people couldn't even, you, you couldn't even deal with your fellow uh, country without going through the white man. And so, yeah, you know, um, he brought this awareness, you know, and I, and I believe this is the reason why he was assassinated because um, they both became national threats, you know, under J. Edgar Hoover, you know, the Black Panther Party, the new Black Panther Party, Khalid Mohammed, uh, Malcolm X, they all became threats. Marcus Garvey. You know, that's the reason why they, uh, J. Edgar Hoover started the whole um, FBI is because of uh, Marcus Garvey, you know. They felt it was a threat just Huh? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah that's right. right, right. Um. So as of today, hmm, let me see. Now, what's the only difference that Malcolm and Khalid Muhammad had with each other? The only difference? Um, I think the only difference is just the time periods. You know, the time periods being, you know, Malcolm was in the 60s and Khalid Muhammad was in the 90s. That was the only difference. I think a lot of their, I think their loyalty was the same. I think their uh, knowledge itself was the same. I think, um, you know, the way they both dealt with being kicked out was very similar. Um, I think just a time period, Tiff. I think it's just a time period. You You know, being in a different time period brings about different scenarios and situations. I think that's the only difference. Do you believe that that's why they're not being taught in public schools, especially when it comes down to Black History Month? Uh, like you don't hear much about Malcolm X or you don't hear much about Khalid Muhammad. You think because they, because of their controversy, that the public school decided that hey, we're not going to talk about these individuals. Um. Yes, Tiff. So one thing that Khalid Muhammad and Malcolm X had in common that the school system and the media will not agree with. They both said that Dr. Uh, Dr. Martin Luther King was wrong. Plain and simple, he was wrong. You know, the whole integration thing, you know. Now, there are some pros and cons to that. You know, we won't, I mean, I don't want to take up time to getting into that, but basically. Okay, well, just name a few pros and a few cons. Just name a few. Okay, number one. Uh, one of the pros during this time is we had our own economy. That was the pro, okay? Not only did we have our own economy, we had our own uh, 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 um, We had our own economy and we had our own, I want to say, botanists. Like people basically our own shaman. Uh, uh, our own who? Our own our own like I, I, what what do you what's the name? I'm trying to say a name without spooking people out. We, we have our own goddamn doctors. Our own herbalists, our own our own healers, I guess you could say. That, okay. that was, does that make sense? Okay, I think I get what you're coming from. Okay, so right, we had okay, so those are two. Now, a disadvantage would be we um, had to integrate with an economy that, okay, so you had the Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre, right? So mm-hmm. you had black people integrated who were doing very successful with a lot of white people that weren't doing so successful when we see how that turned out, okay? Mm-hmm. So in this economy that we're integrated in, Meaning, okay, so if the rich man sprinkles some crumbs, we all have to kind of fight for the crumbs and what's left over for us. So we have, you know, um, you know, we have more split up families because of the whole. And it's funny I would bring up the uh, Democratic Party because 
it was under FDR that started the whole welfare system. But in order to get welfare, you, you can't have no man in your house. You know, that's uh, that's one of the uh, uh, fruits of uh, integration. You know, um, oh, more drug, more drugs. We had more drug flow because uh, even going way back to the um, UNI movement, we didn't allow drugs in our neighborhood. This is another uh, advantage of, of having uh, segregation. You know, I mean, well, I basically I don't I don't like that word, but yeah, we didn't have as much drug use. Integration, we got more drug use because we have more people unemployed, more people with idle time, more drug users. So those are just a sample. Those are just a sample. You know, but I mean, those, I mean, people can actually debate that, you know, they can debate it and refute it. But that's just my observation, just, just from what I've learned from history, too. Okay. 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 Now it's now let's get to the part about drugs real quick. Okay. Yes. Um now people <laughs> now many of us, you know, when it comes to drugs, it yes. can kind of be very it can be complex in to talk about because we all had or there are those of us i shouldn't say we all there are those of us who had family members that consumed drugs and right. that sold drugs right now there are some people that feel like well if black people had more discipline that they would be able to you know get off the drugs and we're not allowed the drugs to take control but okay let's say you do have more discipline now, right. if we look at the drugs, okay, wouldn't that be more of a government issue than just a black people issue or minority issue? Because after all, it was brought into our community by the government. Absolutely. So it's not, it's not much you can really do about it to eliminate the drugs out of our community, like, you know, stop them from distributing or, you know, or stop it from uh, coming into the neighborhoods. It's nothing you can really do. So, when you can come up with reforms, you can try to uh, enforce policy. That's all you can do. But at the end of the day, it's really up to the government because the drugs were already here, but they okay. were using pharma. They were using pharmaceutical and, and in the medical industries. That's what they okay. were. Using. And then when they start coming out with other drugs or other products, <coughs> excuse me to replace these drugs then they pretty much discard them and throw them out on the streets right like okay well, you know, like, i'm sorry what you gonna oh, wait, 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 go ahead okay like for example like heroin right a lot of people don't know that heroin was used in the iv message you know those ivs too that you yeah mm -hmm. so now as a replacement with the morphine right okay okay was used in the coke products like Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, all that. They use cocaine. But because people were getting so addicted and become very hyper, they had to replace it with caffeine. Right, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, of course, marijuana been around for a long time. Right. So these things were used in pharmaceutical and medical industries. Right. All right. So, I mean, it's easy to say that uh you know if black people had more discipline mm -hmm. to not consume these products then to say that well okay what can we do to make sure that they don't come to the neighborhoods in the streets especially when you got people who don't have job opportunities and we don't have a lot of economic resources in our community meaning that we don't have a lot of businesses for example, so if you ain't got a lot of businesses and drugs is the only way and the foundation, one of the main foundation for you to get up out the hood to make profit and make money, even though you know your life is at risk, at serious risk when you're selling drugs. Absolutely. But because you see that you can it's an opportunity for you to make profit, then okay, then you take let's just say you did take that well or so. The question somebody may ask them, well, okay, how how do we what what can be the solution? What is the solution to bring more resources to black people in the community? 
so they can focus on the discipline and so they can focus on being able to work like what what kind of solution will be applicable and i don't see as many people talking much about drugs to these politicians i mean it's like especially with trump like mm -hmm. trump was saying that hey we're gonna get them out of our neighborhood whatever whatever okay so what other solution do you have as far as like uh resources is concerned for the community what 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 kind of like would there be more jobs um what type of solution would you have for those who are addicted to drugs so they won't go back and relapse on that lifestyle again you know what i'm saying right yeah right um i mean yeah that's that's a, that's a very tricky topic to me um tiffany um I, you, like you said, it goes back to willpower, you know, I mean, obviously you and I, we're not on drugs, but right. a lot of people are on drugs and it's, man, it's, man, it's, it's difficult because I have children and I tell them, you know, marijuana is a drug. Now, you know how many people will jump up and goddamn swear it's not a drug? Okay, people can make an argument that cigarette is a drug. It is, a drug. it is a drug, right? It, it is a drug, you know. But people will argue. Not only white people, black people will argue you up and down that these things aren't drugs. Where does this come from? I don't know, you know. And it's funny how you talked about, uh, you know, it wasn't too long ago you had a show on uh, H. Rock Brown, Jamil Alamine. You know, his neighborhood they pushed the drug dealers out. That's a, that's a sample of, 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 of black nationalism right there where you control your own community. But you see what happened to him though. You see what happened to him. Because what Jamil Alamein, whether he understood or didn't understand is that drug, drugs is a big economy. There's a big economy around drug pushing, okay? We supply, you know, I remember I had uh, Rick Ross on the show, the real Rick Ross, where he talked yeah, about- I yeah, the guy that supplanted on him, Blandone was a snitch. And Blandone was supplied by goddamn, you know, in order to support the Contras, they had to, I mean, we we, we funded the whole, the Contras down in uh, South America based on the whole drug thing. Uh, Mexico, you have cartels fighting. They have, a, you know, people don't want to call it for what it is. Mexico right now is undergoing a civil war. A civil war and we support whatever cartel that we feel is in our best interest we go back to that word best interest so we we you know we funded our government funded the sinaloa cartel by el chapel how do you know they went to go they know who exactly to go to when when thing went down with el chapel wasn't the leader of the Sinaloa cartel anyway but that's a whole other topic i don't mean to rant but it's an economy Tiff, it, it is a big economy. It's, it, you know, heroin, coke, all this is a is a is a money maker. You know, and the government is not going to end the world drugs ever. They're not going to do it. You know, because it is a lot of money to be made. And as long as you got, you know, it, it's you talking about billions and trillions of dollars. And then they get money on both ends, meaning we get the drugs in, we'll put it in the black neighborhood, and we will arrest. The black people who deal with drugs. Ali, uh, Bill Clinton. You know. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. and speaking of Bill Clinton, let's talk a little bit about the um, mass incarceration oh, yes. with Joe Biden and Bill Clinton, real quick. Now, you yes. know, they came out around 1994. Right. right. Um, you know, getting into the background of that. And people still black folks still like, oh, you know, Clinton, you know, he wanted us, oh, he down with us, but if they look back in his history as the in the mass incarceration, like what was your I mean when the bill first came out, because I was too young back then. Now you probably was a teenager around that time when that bill came out. Like, what was your what was your take on it? My take on it was damn, I better not get in trouble because I had an uncle. I had uncles and cousins that got locked up, meaning the three strikes. Yeah, that, that was scary. It was like, dang, you can't do any crime, you know? And it was very draconian in California because we had curfews. 
And if you were a convicted felon, you got on curfews, they could lock you up. Wait, wait, but they don't want to talk about that. And this is a democratic state. They don't want to talk about how the rest of the country was influenced by California, a blue state. And how, yeah, those those are very draconian laws, you know. And that's why I said, you know, uh, Kamala Harris is a, is a, is a is a is a birth child. Uh, she is just a, a a carrier of that. But yeah, that that yeah, Bill Clinton, God dang, uh, Joe Biden, yeah, they started all that stuff. I remember that stuff. That was yeah, that was it. Was, it was pretty scary. It was pretty scary knowing that people that I've known were getting locked up. And they could look for any little thing. It wouldn't even you wouldn't even have to commit no felonies, which was scary, you know. But it's funny because a lot of times when people went uh, that did happen to get out, because some people did get out later on, and they would joke because the lifers were like, "Oh, you one of those three strikers? Oh, you'll be out." But it's just the fact that you had to go back into that system and kind of sit for a minute. And it was it was you know. But a lot of them, but a lot of them did eventually get out. But it's just the fact that, you know, you even have to put yourself through that. So, yeah, that it was scary, Tiff. It was very scary. And it was even more scary that the rest of the country adapted that the whole mind frame. Hmm. We, yeah. Georgia adapted it. In fact, Georgia wanted to go step further. They were like, well, two strikes. You had you had other states trying to compete with uh, California for you know, who could lock up the more, you know, most people. You know, it, it was it was disgusting. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Okay, so um, let me ask you this. Have you read up on Lyndon B. Johnson, the whole concept about war on poverty? Let's say that again? Uh, on Lyndon B. Johnson, remember he came out with it, the whole thing about war on poverty? Yeah, war on poverty. Yes, 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 yes. Now, okay, the whole, looking back at it now and looking at it today, what did the war on poverty actually do? How did it combat the issue of poverty in our communities? Um, now you gotta remember, Lyndon B. Johnson was a Democrat, and we, yeah. let's not get about, let's not talk about Earth the Kid, but we are gonna talk about Earth the Kid a little bit before we get okay. done. Let's talk about this war on poverty. What did it actually do? What was the whole agenda? Uh, you know, it was supposed to the war on poverty with Lyndon B. Johnson. That I think they never followed through with it, Tiffany. I think they had set up organizations and all that, and they were, I think it was just lip service because you don't hear nothing about it. I didn't, you know, they didn't follow up on it. Mm. Because right after Lyndon B. Johnson, you had Jimmy Carter. Mm. Oh, no, 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 Joe Ford. No, it was a Joe Ford or Jimmy Carter. It was Joe Ford. And once you know, yeah, you have, Joe Ford and then Jimmy Carter. Then Jimmy Carter, right. So once Gerald Ford came in, this was at the tail end of Lyndon B. Johnson. They never followed through with it. And you know, presidents, you know, if you are different from a different party, your thing is to go in and change. Because let's just keep it real. After Obama left, it was it was Donald Trump's thing to go in and change it. Just like now they want to put Biden in because he want to change it. So they never followed through with the whole war on poverty. It was, and they never followed through. But the war on drugs, they followed that all the way through. Hmm. Okay. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about Earth the Kid. Um. Okay. So back in 1968 or 69, she went to the White House. Right. She was invited to the White House for a luncheon with Lady Bird, who is uh, Linda B. Johnson's wife. Um. And so they were talking about how they want to gentrify communities. And how they want to, you know, uh, make it more beautified, etc. So, Arthur brought up the topic about the Vietnam War. Now, you gotta remember during that time period, and even Muhammad Ali, he refused to give in to the war because remember they uh, told him that if he doesn't uh, sign up, he loses his license. Yeah, he was gonna yeah be locked up and lose his license and all that stuff. All right, so a lot of black people was very vocal about the Vietnam War back then, a lot of them. And Eartha Kitt happened to be one of them. She went to the office and she voiced her opinion, her views, and she brought the subject to Lady Bird, and that rubbed her the wrong way, pretty much. So that's when Lyndon 
President uh, Johnson came in and pretty much questioned uh, Arthur's stance on the whole big mom and was like, you know, why did you bring this up? So she didn't know that she was going to get in the world of trouble. <laughs> but long story short, she eventually got blackballed here in the United States. And it was taking her a while to come back and even find work because she had to go out the country because they blackballed her. All because they do now stuff. Now, we're talking about, again, this is a Democrat. Right. All right. So now, do you think that Linda B. Johnson showed his racism, his racist attitude towards Eartha Kitt when she brought up the concept about the Vietnam War? Oh, absolutely. She, you know, he probably thought his now, how dare this nigga gal don't stay in her place. That's how they thought back then. They used to call black women nigga gals back then. That was a term, nigga gal. How dare this, how dare this nigga gal come in here and goddamn tell me about Vietnam World. What you know about Vietnam World, nigga gal? We can control this. Yeah, you're, you're questioning his, you know, his authority, his, uh, you know, how dare, who are you? Right. You know, that. so yeah, he felt, he felt insulted that this, Black woman would come in there and question them on the Vietnam War. Now, mind you, war, you make money off war. You know, you got the uh, military industrial complex. So, yeah, they, yeah, of course, he, he was upset about that. You know, you got generals and you got uh, manufacturers that put money in his pocket. So, yeah, he's going he's gonna to feel outraged by that, you know. Just like Joe Biden is for a war. But that's a whole other <laughs> That's a whole nother. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, oh, ahead, I'm sorry. The last question is going to be about Cornell Pro. Now, okay. as of today, we don't hear much about Cornell Pro. Uh, is it still going or do they have another name they go by? They do have another name for it. It's called Infiltration. It's called Black Lives Matter. It's called Antifa. And it's called like your white, white wing uh, militia groups. Anytime you put a person in there, want to agitate, I don't care if you're on the right or left, oh, the Black Panther Party, they're in there too, that want to do some just off the wall nonsense, that's COINTELPRO. They just don't have the name, but they always want to do stuff. I don't know if you heard about the militia men that wanted to kidnap the, uh, the, the uh, governor of some state. They arrested, yeah, they arrested. Oh, Tiff. Oh, I gotta, I gotta put you up on that. Yeah, there was these militia men, these right wing militia men, and they wanted to kidnap this governor. This just happened. One of those dudes convinced all them other dummies to do that nonsense. And the militias don't normally do that kind. They don't want to do no kidnap people. But you put one idiot in there that an influence. The all Cointel Pro is is a one influencer to get that group to do some crazy nonsense. That goes for Black Lives Matter, that goes for Antifa, that goes for your Black Panthers, that goes for your white wing militias. You know, um, I say that because I talk to these groups. I talk to the white wing militias. I talk to your uh, uh, anonymouses. I talk to you, you know, I talk to people on the far right groups and far left groups. And I'm telling you, it's always that one person. Let me give you a prime example because this is something I, I, I can tell you that I've witnessed. I went to the, uh, it was a, a Ku Klux Klan rally in Stone Mountain, Georgia, right? Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, the Ku Klux Klan was sectioned off. They were protected by the police, and they were trying to get them up out of there because you had gangster disciples there. You had Bloods, Crips there. You had, uh, you even had, like, uh, 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 skinhead groups they call sharks, skinheads against racial prejudice. You had militia there. You had all these groups that were against the Klan, right? Mm -hmm. You have the UP Newton Gun Club. You, they got so many members. Now, they're a good group, man. I love the group, but you have this one guy talking, you know, because you have the, um, you have the, uh, you know, a lot of these groups that have uh, Confederate flags, right? But they say, well, you know, we're not down with the Klan. We're, we're, we're heritage, not hate. Okay, whether you agree or disagree with it, they're not there to start any crap with black people, right? So, you have them marching, and so you got one member that feel like this flag is offensive. Man, let's go take them out. Let's go start trouble with it. And I'm like, I agree that you disagree with the Confederate flag, but why are you 
causing a commotion. Everybody is like, like not uh, at each other's throat. It's like, okay, we're all marching around. We all looking for the Klan. The Klan is gone. The police done goddamn airlifted them out of the hot for their safety up out of there. So all these groups ain't got nobody to fight because they wanted to fight the Klan, but the Klan is up out of there. So now, because these guys have Confederate flags, oh, let's go fight this group. That's some COINTEL pro nonsense right there. Like, why would you want to fight them? Like, dude, like, really? You want to damn shoot it off and, you know, I don't know. Another example people can say, um, the F -F, not effing around crew. You had everybody in formation and you had one idiot that shot three other members because his gun was loaded. What kind of, that's some COINTEL pro stuff. Like, did you oh, know he was accidentally shot? I got you. So, I, I thought, I, I thought that I don't know if we're talking about the same story because the one day no, I went, no. he had accidentally shot himself or the gun let off or something by accident. What are you doing? I mean, I'm all for it. You know, we, we got to have some safety measures in. Why, why are we wanting to come out with a load of gun? We're not at war. All you doing is marching and demonstrating. Okay, I, I'm with that. Okay, all right. But what are you doing? Shot himself and he shot three other people. Just that's some that's some questionable behavior, Tiff. That's all I'm saying. You know? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's some questionable behavior. Okay, okay, then. Okay, so before I close out, is there any closing remarks that you have to say? Um, I want to I want to say thank you for having me on the show. You know, I appreciate that. And uh, man, I mean, I am I love it. I'm I'm your number one fan. Now, people in the chat may disagree with me, but I'm your number one fan. Too. And uh, just keep doing what you're doing. And um, yeah, thank you for having me. Okay. All right, well, thank yeah. you for coming. I appreciate that. That really, that, that really means a lot. I'm glad that we were able to have the discussion. And I'm glad that we had this conversation. Hopefully, I can, uh, you know, get back with you in the near future. I would love to. I would to. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just let me know. And you know what I'm saying? We'll just set up something. All right? Okay. All right, okay, then, well, you have a good one, Black Sun. Be safe. You know, take it easy with this virus. And thank you guys in the chat for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate that. Thank you for your comments. Um, <laughs> so Julius just said he a number one fan. No, Julius William, I'm her number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, I appreciate that. Thank y'all. And make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Make sure you share this video. If you want to, you're more than welcome to do so. Or make sure you hit the notification bell whenever I come on. All right? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And thank you, Black Sun. With that being said, this is your girl Tiffany. And I'm out. Peace. Peace. All right.